Yeah, it's the battle of the generations, y'all. Now, normally online is Gen Z versus millennials, but in this video, we are taking it to the max. We are lining up boomers versus Gen X versus millennials versus Gen Z. Duking it out. Which generation had the best beauty trends? And which generation had the worst beauty trends? Nah, but I saw Nick Lewis, you know, he does an interior design channel over here on YouTube. You know, I, I quite enjoy it to so go and check him out. He recently did a video on interior design trends between the generations. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do a beauty trends one here, except some of these trends ain't so fun, which you'll see in a minute. We're gonna be touching on everything from makeup to skincare to hair to cosmetic procedures. Given the current discourse on Gen Z aging like milk and everybody kind of dumping on Gen Z, talking about, you know, they, they look old for their age and, you know, they're getting all these cosmetic procedures and whatnot, which we talked about in this video right here, you'd be surprised to know that they're actually not the generation getting the most cosmetic procedures, so keep watching. Now, as a quick reminder and reference point, here are how the various generations are defined. Now, the baby boomers were born roughly around 1946 to 1964, and I say roughly for all of these because, you know, different sources have different years, but they all, they all they roughly, roughly around, around the same. same. Boomers, nowadays, in 2024, as of April 2024, when I'm filming this video, they would be around 60 to 70. 78 years old. Next, Gen X, roughly born around 1965 through 1980. Today's Gen Xers are aged around 44 through 59. Millennials were born roughly around 1981 through 1996, making millennials in this year roughly around 28 through 43 years old. Then we have Gen Z, roughly born around 1997 through 2012. Today, Gen Z would be about 12 through 27 years old. Let's kick it off with makeup, starting with the boomers, who, the oldest of which, were in their teens and 20s and late 60s to early 70s. And the younger boomers were in their teens and 20s in the 70s through early 80s. Now, boomers get a lot of flack and sometimes rightfully so. <laughs> but one thing we gotta hand it to the boomers is that a lot of the makeup trends that they were rocking in the 60s and 70s are the blueprint for a lot of the makeup looks that we still wear today. So in the 60s, we saw a lot of winged liner and graphic liner looks paired with lots of mascara, lots of lashes. They were like this really PC lash looks where the focus was boom on the eyes. Popular boomer beauty icons and influencers, because you know, every generation had their influencers, include, but of course are not limited to. We just mentioned Twiggy and Diana Ross, of course, the Supremes. Cher, Diane Carroll, Aretha Franklin, Cicely Tyson, Dionne Warwick, Bridget Bardot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then as we got into the 1970s, a lot of the winged and graphic liner from the 60s kind of skated on into the 70s. However, as we further progressed into the 70s and the disco era started ushering in, we saw metallic eyeshadow, glossy lips, glitter, lashes, blush, lots and lots of glamour. Now some popular boomer beauty icons of the 1970s included, but of course we're not limited to, Pam Greer, Farrah Fawcett, Judy Pace, Jane Kennedy, Donna Summer, Beverly Johnson, Naomi Sims, Grace Jones, Tamara Dobson, etc., etc. Popular boomer makeup brands include Posner, Maybelline, Zuri Cosmetics, Max Factor, Revlon, Fashion Fair, Lori Roberts, etc. Now, some of the younger boomers, they were in their teens and 20s in the late 70s, early 80s, and we know the 80s brought in a lot of glamour, but glamour to the extreme. I'm talking about blush. Whew, we saw a lot of glam. We saw a lot of everything. The 80s were a decade of excess, excessive blush, excessive eyeshadow, excessive lip, like everything, all the bright colors. Like, you wore the colors of the rainbow on your face back then. Now, me personally, I can't be mad at the color because I do think that color looks so striking, especially color cosmetics look so striking on deeper 
skin tones and that is apparent in some of the boomer slash gen x beauty icons of the time which include people like jada jackson whitney houston felicia rashad iman madonna princess diana brooke shields etc etc the 80s saw a surge of mainstream brands that today you'd be kind of surprised to see had lines dedicated for people of color like al may now some of the 80s makeup trends did have some crossover with the next generation generation x the older gen x's were in their teens through the 1980s did i miss any of the boomer makeup trends or icons let me know in the comments now remember how i said how the older generation can either greatly influence or in some cases de-influence the younger generation and that's kind of what we saw as the 80s ushered on out all the excess and the 90s started to usher in some minimalism and here is where we talk about generation x a little bit more with the older of the gen x bunch being in their 20s through the 90s with some of the younger gen x being in their teens to just teetering into their 20s in the 90s and much like the boomers some of the gen x makeup trends that were popular in the 90s are still things that we do today in 2024 such as brown lip liner paired with a lighter lip which I have done today. We also saw a lot of matte foundation, which, you know, sometimes I kind of call the 90s the, the flashback decade because there was a lot, and I mean a lot, <laughs> of foundation flashback in the 90s. And that was with the white celebs and the black celebs. And I'm sure if you, you know, you go through your 35 millimeter disposable camera developed, you know, in your film and whatnot, you might see a lot of the, the flashback in your pictures too. There was also a lot of dark, matte lipstick very dark browns dark burgundies sometimes even as dark as going with a dark matte black lip brows were very thin brows were plucked within an inch of their lives as a matter of fact there might be some people who you know were plucking their brows back then that are still victims <laughs> of the bold eyebrows now because they was plucking back then we also saw a lot of light colored eyeshadows but as the mid to late 90s ushered in we also started to see things kind of gloss up and get a little bit more glam. Now, some of the popular Gen X makeup brands include MAC, Urban Decay, Clinique, Wet n Wild, Lip Smackers for the younger Gen X, and, and older millennials, because, you know, we were greasing our lips up. <laughs> Benefit, CoverGirl, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Popular Gen X beauty icons and influencers of the 1990s include, but of course, they're not limited to Drew Barrymore, Brandy, Aaliyah, Tony Braxton, Selena, Nia Long, Halle Berry, Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, of course, Jennifer Aniston. Everybody named Mama had that Rachel, but we'll talk hair later. <laughs> now, when I say everybody named Mama, I don't mean everybody named Mama. I mean everybody and a mama, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, you know, we had to have the supers in there. Now for the younger Gen X, and then the older millennials, we usher into the 2000s. And as an older millennial myself, 2000s makeup is something that I would love to forget. <laughs> And you know, for a second I did forget, but then one of my friends from college, you know, I went to college between 1999 and 2003. One of my friends from college sent me this picture. Now I'm gonna block out her face cause she, you know, she ain't asked me to put her up in here, but Lord. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Popular Gen X slash millennial makeup trends of the 2000s include frosted eyeshadow. There was so much frosted eyeshadow. We also saw the continuation of the dark lined lip and then the very glossy gloss. Oh my God, MAC chestnut lip liner, which is a dark brown, and then Old Baby Lip Gloss, which is a clear lip gloss with, oh, lip glass, excuse me, which is a clear lip gloss with gold, sparkle, very iridescent, very shiny lip glass is what Matt calls it. And you would just mm -mm -mm with a dark lip liner and now that combo was so overdone that I brief, I remember because I was on some makeup message boards back in the mid to late 2000s where people were like, yo, we gotta put a moratorium on the, the old baby lip glass and the Mac chestnut lip liner. We need to like cease and desist. There was also a lot of glitter, like body glitter, face glitter, like just everything glitter. I remember getting ready for the club and just putting all kinds of glitter right up 
here and on the legs and whatnot, just glitter everywhere. Thin brows, which I can't remember if I was going for a thin brow look or if I just didn't realize that like the people that I was getting my eyebrows uh, waxed by didn't know what they were doing, but my, my brows were significantly thinner back in the 2000s than they are now. Thank goodness for good sense and the brows, you know? They, they ain't get affected. Now towards the end of the 2000s though, we were starting to see really light matte nude lipsticks and very heavy eye makeup, like smoky, 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 smoky. And he would pair the two together. So the very, very smoky dark eye with the very, very light nude lip. Now, popular makeup brands of the 2000s include Bobbi Brown, Urban Decay, MAC, CoverGirl, Benefit Cosmetics, NARS, Clinique, Maybelline, L'Oreal, et cetera, et cetera. So popular younger Gen X slash older millennial beauty icons and influencers include Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Jessica Simpson, Jennifer Lopez, Rihanna, Tyra, Kelly Rowland. And we also saw a lot of the video vixens, the, the women who were in a lot of these rap videos come to the forefront. Like we were like, okay, but what was what, she wearing? I wanna wear that same outfit. I wanna, I wanna do my makeup like her too. So we saw a lot of that with video vixens like Buffy the Body, Melissa Ford, Corinne Steffens, Esther Baxter, et cetera, et cetera. So while some older millennials like myself and some of the younger millennials may kind of overlap a little bit with the 2000s, I would say that 2010s were really the decade of the millennial. Now, although in many ways the 2010s kind of look back on the 90s because quite often what was popular 20 years ago usually comes back, you know, like things come back every 20 years. Although now doing this, I can especially see where the 20s 2010s kind of called back to the 60s with the glam and the um, intricate eyeliner and the graphic lines and the wing liners and all that other stuff because the 2010s saw a return to the glam makeup. We saw cut creases, we saw glitter, but I think we were more intentional about the placement of the glitter in the 2010s as opposed to the 2000s. The 2000s, it just kind of seemed like, you know, you were kind of had a little bit too much to drink at a party and you fell into a garbage can filled with glitter and you kind of rolled around as you stumbled to get back up and then you had the glitter on. Whereas in the 2010s, it was like, okay, I am intentionally placing this glitter cut crease on my eye or, you know, the glitter is gonna be in my lashes and things like that too. That's a difference. <laughs> Matte skin was definitely a thing. Like the matter, the better. Like foundations got so matte. Foundation is matte, matte. <laughs> There was also a lot of the overlining of the lips. We saw a lot of fantasy and very creative and artistic makeup looks during the 2010s. And I mean, this is peak 2010. I want to say somewhere around 2016, 2017 is when we really started seeing like the Instagram makeup look. Like you were so contoured. It was like, well, where are our features? Popular makeup brands of the 2010s include Urban Decay, Anastasia Beverly Hills, ColourPop, Too Faced, Morphe, Tarte, and Kylie. Kylie Cosmetics, <laughs> and by the end of the decade, Fenty Beauty. Popular millennial beauty icons and influencers of the 2010s include Beyonce, Rihanna, The Hadids, Kim Kardashian, Kylie Jenner, and of course, the makeup influencers, which there were so many, but to name a few, Jackie Ina, Huda Katan, Carly Bible. Now, Gen Z makeup trends. Now, there is some overlap between the older Gen Z and some of the 2010s stuff, kind of little overlap there, but I would say by far the uh, 2020s, although we're still, you know, working our way through it, obviously, but the 2020s is the Gen Z decade. Now, clearly the internet and social media influenced what the makeup trends were for millennials in the 2010s. However, we see something a little bit different with how social media plays into some of these beauty trends that the Gen Zers are getting into in the 2020. And we see that shift in makeup trends being more towards subsets, especially with the proliferation of aesthetics, which Gen Z loves an aesthetic. It's a new aesthetic every goddamn week, it seems. Like, sheesh. How y'all keep up with that? <laughs> so Gen Z is the first generation to grow up with the internet being a part of daily life. And thus, as they came and come of age, as you know, the youngest of them aren't even teenagers yet, 
Gen Z is more likely than other generations to be able to curate their popular cultural experience. And this is pretty evident even in their makeup trends as there are just so many of these aesthetics that come out, like the cold makeup, the strawberry makeup, the latte makeup, clean girl makeup, and there's probably 50 million other ones that have probably come out and have faded out of existence in between me filming this video, it being edited, and then going live on this channel. <laughs> But I will say, despite all of the different aesthetics, they do generally seem to be a lot less pared down from the heavily contoured and Instagram makeup that was popular in the previous generation. Definitely has more of a focus on the skin and that gently play up the features with things like liquid and cream blush, gloss, and mascara. Now, obviously we're not even halfway through the 2020s yet, so this list of popular makeup brands amongst Gen Z can definitely change a lot. But thus far, we're seeing brands like e.l.f., Charlotte Tilbury, Dior, Rare Beauty, and Maybelline at the forefront. And then you also have a lot of the TikTok viral beauty products. These are things that, you know, pick up steam in the TikTok algorithm, videos garnering millions upon millions upon millions of views. People rush out to get these products, they sell out, and then you might not hear about them again for a while or ever again just in time for the next big viral beauty product to come out. And of course, this list of popular beauty icons and influencers of the 2020s will, of course, change because it's only 2024 and, you know, the way algorithms and Gen Z aesthetic tastes and whatnot switch up so fast, this list could be obsolete by the time this video comes out. But I would have to say people like Halle Bieber, Selena Gomez. I want to say that the Hadids were a little bit relevant in here. JT from the City Girls, Saweetie. Lotto, Meg Thee Stallion, Cardi B, etc., etc. Were there any 2020s beauty trends that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Now let's talk hair, skin, and cosmetic procedures and take a wager in the comments right now of who you think, which generation you think has the most cosmetic procedures. Take a wager, don't you go Googling and trying to cheat. Just right off the top of your head, which generation do you think? And then edit your comment when you find out what the answer actually is. Now, while I had said earlier that makeup in the 1960s definitely laid a blueprint for makeup that we still do right now in 2024, uh, the skincare that was available in 1960s, I would have to jump into a time machine and be like, yo, like if I was in that show Quantum Leap, I'd be like, yo, no, leap me back into 2020 because 19 skincare was kind of whack. So skincare in the 60s and 70s was very, very simplistic, especially compared to today's standards. Women mostly use cold creams to remove their makeup and cleanse their skin. And then back then toners were definitely necessary because a lot of the cleansers back then were very harsh and you needed that toner to bring back the pH in your skin. Some of them use moisturizers. Now, I did come across a little tidbit about sunscreens from the 60s and 70s. However, they said that they weren't widely used. They were very oily and greasy, didn't last long, which kind of defeated the purpose of them being sunscreens. So, I can just imagine how awful they were. <laughs> Popular boomer skincare brands include Helena Rubinstein, Cody, Yardley, Oil of Ulan, which became Oil of Olay, and then which became Olay, Pond's Cold Cream, and Noxzema. And then unfortunately for people of color, particularly African Americans who were the largest minority at the time, being of a deeper complexion could greatly affect everything in life, including your socioeconomic status, and sometimes even your safety. Now because of this, some African Americans did turn to products that were marketed to make your complexion brighter and lighter. A lot of them even used the term whitening. And unfortunately, there were a lot of ads for these bleaching creams, uh, especially in black media such as Ebony Magazine. Now, it's funny how people try to get on Gen Z talking about all they do is wear wigs and whatnot and blah, 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 blah. But yo, boomer, <laughs> mamas, aunties, grandmas, great grandmas, you know, gender non-conforming people, they was into them wigs heavy back in the 60s and 70s. Hair-wise, we saw lots of volume, flips, updos. Into the late 60s with the hippie era, we saw long, very, very long straight hair. The Vidal Sassoon cut, and we saw some froze. Now, when it comes to cosmetic procedures, the 60s and the 70s, but we'll talk more about the 70s in a second, saw a lot of technological advancements when it came to plastic surgery. So we saw the advent of facelifts that not only lifted the 
overlying skin, but also the underlying tissue. So facelifts before would snatch the mess out of your skin, but it would ignore <laughs> everything else underneath. So people were looking like, <laughs> <laughs> like they were in a windswept tunnel. Now the thing with that is in the 60s, the oldest boomers were just in their early 20s. So they probably were not getting facelifts. So that, that wasn't a trend for them. But other surgeries and procedures popular at the time, 1961 saw the introduction of the silicone breast implant. And then 1964 saw the first saline breast implants. Rhinoplasties, blepharoplasties, AKA eyelid surgeries, as well as chemical peels were popular in the 1960s. When I say popular, they were popular amongst the subset of cosmetic procedures that were being performed at the time. People weren't really forthcoming with their cosmetic procedures. They, they weren't, first of all, there was no internet. <laughs> and people a little hush-hush when they did get work done. Not even a little hush-hush, they was, they said, now, as we move along into 1970s skincare, hair, and cosmetic procedures, there wasn't that much of a change in skincare products that I saw when I was doing my research as how things changed in the 70s. They pretty much were kind of similar to the products that you had in the 60s, except you did see there was more awareness about using moisturizers. People were more aware of sun safety. Now, while doing my quick research for this video, I did notice a lot less skin bleaching ads through the 1970s in the black magazine. The Black Pride movement definitely had a huge impact on this. This is where African Americans, by and large, were starting to see themselves as beautiful, despite what larger society were telling African Americans at the time. In the 70s, boomer hair lengths got even longer. We we're seeing a lot of roller sets. We we're seeing feathered hair. And then, of course, with African Americans, we're seeing the natural. Now, when it comes to cosmetic procedures, by the mid 1970s, which most boomers would have been, you know, the youngest of which would have been in their late teens, early 20s, and then the older boomers would have been in their 20s, veering into their 30s. These procedures weren't just for the rich anymore, as proclaimed by a 1976 New York Times article. In the article, a woman who was looking to re-enter the workforce after raising children and realizing that she was competing with younger women and needed to look the part, she got her face, eyelids, and throat done for $3,500 plus the $700 hospital fee. Now you might be like, damn, I want me some of them 1970s cosmetic procedures, but that is a about $20,200 in 2024 money. <laughs> Popular cosmetic procedures in the 1970s included botulinum toxin to treat facial tics, facial injections, breast augmentation, and rhinoplasty. Now, by the 1980s is when skin care started to become a little bit less basic. And in the 80s, boomers would have been in their mid 20s to just about knock, knock, knocking on 40s door. <laughs> and in the 80s, we start to see some of the first anti-aging skincare products. Acne cleansers were also introduced as well as astringents, which were products that were used to mattify oily skin. The 1980s also saw people starting to exfoliate their skin regularly. And and we saw a major breakthrough in skincare that we still use today, and it was when tretinoin was discovered for its ability to help with aging. And when it came to hair, whew, it became obnoxiously big in the 80s. We saw feathered hair, perm, short for permanent, which meant when people with straight hair would, you know, get their hair chemically treated so they'd be really tightly curled and kind of like big and kind of frizzy looking. We also saw jerry curls, asymmetrical bobs, roller sets, the wave nouveau. Now when it comes to cosmetic procedures, it was in the late 80s where botulinum toxin was first used to treat wrinkles. Other popular procedures included breast augmentation, rhinoplasty, and then as we started to see more advancements in the techniques, we saw a lot more liposuction, facelifts, and the Brazilian butt lift. There is some overlap in the 80s with boomers being in their, you know, 20s to just knocking on 40s door, and then Gen X being in their teens. Now let's move on to 90s skin, hair, and cosmetic procedures with Gen X. So as an older millennial, I kind of remember the 90s as like the golden age of skincare ads because like there was always like a Noxzema or a Clearasil or a Clean and Clear ad with some like teenagers splashing water on their face and you just wanted to try all the products. Although now looking back, you know, a lot of them products were kind of like trash, but 
Anyway, it seemed like a renaissance when, you know, we were going through it. Alpha hydroxy acids were also introduced in the 90s and unfortunately, you also started to see a lot of people tanning in the 90s. Popular genetic skincare brands include, but of course not limited to, Neutrogena, Seabreeze, Olay, The Body Shop, and although it was not a skincare brand, of course, but you can't mention the 1990s without mentioning CK1 perfume. Hair-wise, we saw crimped hair, we saw box braids, we saw finger waves, finger waves with the scrunch. We saw French rolls. We saw a lot of updos, buns. There were also a lot of butterfly clips, chopsticks, pixie cuts, space buns, flipped ends, the Halle Berry cut, which you know is longer than a pixie but shorter than a bob. Cosmetic procedures became more popular in the 90s with over 1 million procedures performed. Popular cosmetic procedures included liposuction, saline breast implants were at the forefront for a bit in the 90s because the silicone breast implants were taken off the market. Uh, they were then later introduced back in the 2000s. And rounding out the popular procedures of the 90s is blepharoplasty. Now the 2000s, and we have a little Gen X and millennial overlap here. Skin care was a lot better. This is when we start to see more personalized skin care, more use of retinol, more use of vitamin C. And then there was also more demand for natural and organic ingredients, even though not always better. <laughs> but, but we know that now. Do we? Do y'all? Popular skincare brands of the 2000s include St. Ives, Kiehl's, Olay, Neutrogena, Proactive, and Clinique. Hair-wise, we had a bunch of different styles, like straight hair with a little bit of a flip at the end. We saw chunky highlights. We saw a flat twist with butterfly clips. We saw braids, lots of cornrows. We saw Farrah Fawcett feathers. Now when it came to cosmetic procedures in the 2000s, they were starting to become a little bit more widely talked about and mainstream, especially with cosmetic surgery reality shows like Dr. 90210, The Swan, I Want a Famous Face, and more. Some of them cosmetic surgery reality shows were out of pocket. We also saw an uptick in cosmetic procedures. So for liposuction, in the year 2000 alone, more than 670,000 liposuction procedures were performed which was a 12% increase from 1999 and nearly a tenfold increase from 1990. In the year 2000 alone, 244,000 facelifts were performed, up from 37,000 in 1990. Eyelid surgery, 2,465,000 4 eyelid surgeries were performed. And mind you, this is just in that one year. By 2006, breast augmentation became the most popular cosmetic surgery procedure. In 2005, tummy tucks took the place of facelifts in popularity as more people were turning to body contouring and looking for less invasive facial rejuvenation treatments. Now let's talk 2010 skin, hair, and cosmetic procedures, which is widely the millennial decade. Now where skin in previous decades had been pretty simple, maybe you had a three-step routine by the time you got to the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, by 2010 skincare was starting to explode. We were seeing influences from the East, especially with K-beauty, Skincare routines were 10, 12, maybe even 14 or more steps long. People wanted glass skin, which was a trend that came from Korean beauty. Serums and sheet masks became very popular as well. I remember folks were well into them sheet masks in the 2010s. Tech and beauty started to come together hand in hand, especially with devices like the Clarisonic. People were also using devices like microneedling. There was also a rise in clean beauty brands in the 2010s. And do y'all remember when C CBD was in almost every damn thing. Everything had CBD. Popular skincare brands of the 2010s include Glossier, CeraVe, Drunk Elephant, Paula's Choice, and La Roche-Posay. Now when it comes to hair, though it started in the mid to late 2000s, the 2010s was definitely where we saw a lot of black women return back to their natural kinks, coils, and curls. So natural hairstyles were huge in this decade. Towards the mid to late 2010s we started to see a lot more wigs especially lace front wigs and you would see them in a lot of like bold colors and even pastel colors other hair trends we saw the undercut which i wound up getting but out of necessity because the uh, weave that i had took my hair took my hair out <laughs> Bobs with bold highlights, top knots. Now, cosmetic procedure wise, this is when Botox, dermal fillers, PRP, AKA the vampire facial, 
microdermablation, chemical peels, RF microneedling, and laser hair removal all gain popularity. And of course, the mainstays, rhinoplasty, breast augmentation, blepharoplasty, and facelifts. There is some interlap between millennials and Gen Z in the 2010s. Millennials were in their 20s and 30s, whereas uh, Gen Z, some of the older Gen Z were in their late teens to kind of knocking on their early 20s. Now, Gen Z skin, hair, and cosmetic procedures of the 2020s. Now, obviously, we're only in 2024, so some of this stuff can change, you know, as we go more into the decade. However, skin care definitely exploded. Some might say it's because, you know, a lot of people were sitting at home during the pandemic looking at themselves in their Zoom cameras and in their phone cameras and, and whatnot and being like, dang, what am, what am I gonna do? We also had a perfect storm where not only were people sitting at home looking at themselves in front of the camera all the time, but you also had a lot of dermatologists, estheticians, and you know other skincare professionals who could not have their shops open during the lockdown times who were on social media giving advice. So it was like, whoa, it was like this huge skin explosion. There were a lot of skin micro trends, which were, you know, a lot of them were things that people were doing before, but now they had names for them because of social media. So things like skin flooding, skin cycling, slugging. You also had a lot of single ingredient spotlight, especially with brands like The Ordinary and Inky List. There are a lot of tools like ice globes, gua sha, dermaplaning, etc. Skincare became a lot of people's personalities in the 2020s. Popular Gen Z skincare brands of the 2020s, and obviously this is subject to change because it's only 2024. However, brands like The Ordinary, Inky List, CeraVe, Polish Choice, Drunk Elephant, Kazarask, and a slew of K-beauty brands were at the forefront. When it comes to hair so far, some of the top trends are the wolf cut, middle part hairstyles, you know, the whole middle part versus side part. I like both. Knotless braids with curlies, 30 inch middle parted bust down weaves or wigs. And speaking of wigs, it was wigs, wigs, and mo wigs. People tend to get on today's youth a lot for wearing wigs, but they weren't, they, they ain't started. Wigs might have lost their popularity amongst the youth in the 80s and 90s and into the 2000s, but they are back with a vengeance, baby. Now, let's talk cosmetic procedures amongst the Gen Z crowd. Now, because of social media, talk around cosmetic procedures is way less taboo. I remember when I first got under eye filler and I think that was either 2017 or 2018, and I was like, you know what? People don't talk about this as much, but I'm, I'm gonna talk about it. And that 2018 wasn't that long ago. That was what, six years ago? The way the conversation has shifted so much in such a short span of time is amazing. Gen Z seems to talk a lot about cosmetic procedures, because they do, and they be on the TikTok and the YouTube and whatnot just talking about them procedures, but they're actually not the generation that gets them the most. It's actually the older generations, particularly Gen X, that gets the most cosmetic cosmetic procedures, according to some stats from the American Society of Plastic Surgery. In 2023, 45% of cosmetic procedures were performed on Gen X, while 30% were performed on baby boomers, 16% on millennials, and about 3% on patients over 70. So, you know, it's the older folks getting the cosmetic procedures more than the Gen Zers. The most popular cosmetic procedures of the 2020s thus far, liposuction, breast augmentation, blepharoplasty, abdominoplasty, breast lift, rhinoplasty, buttocks augmentation, lip enhancement, fat grafting on the face, and breast reduction round out the top 10 cosmetic procedures performed in 2022, according to Statista. Now, there's been a lot of Gen Z slander saying that they're aging like milk and that it's because of their hair, makeup, and cosmetic procedure choices, but is that really it? We talked about that and more in this video right here. Click on it and I'll see you there.